Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses, a podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and and being a steward of the land. Tim, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, and welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. It's been a great year, really, it has. Uh, we got a, we got a stacked agenda today, don't we? We do, we do, we do. Today's uh, episode is all about putting some closure to uh, 2021 and and all the good things and all the challenges that we had. We've we've had some challenges and some um, and some a lot of successes from a podcast standpoint, but um, it's always exciting at the end of the year looking back what happened and. And uh, that's what this episode's all about. Yeah, and you carried us. I mean, let, let's just jump into that. I mean, you okay. ca- you carried us uh, as as people that have been subscribing to our channel. They know that have been this year. I've been on an assignment, and uh, it turned into a little longer assignment than what than what I had I had the, planned on. The special temporary assignment turned into more of a permanent. I sure feels that way. Job. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's all good, man. It's all good. It was still, it was a lot of fun. For for those of you guys, I just you know, my wife Ruth, I had retired, uh, semi retired right before COVID, and uh, anyway, it came down to COVID really dried up all this business that I had um, all set up. So it started looking like I was going to move more into retirement than semi retirement, and. Actually, as COVID started to abate to some degree, um, there was tons of opportunities that popped back up. And actually, I've been actually deflecting some of these opportunities to other people uh, because I can't, there's not enough of me to go around. And, uh, but when this first opportunity popped up, my wife, Ruth, I mean, we were, I was trying to find out more information about the situation, and my wife had yes. <laughs> she was counting money, wasn't she? <laughs> Did that or get me out of the house? I don't know which it was. <laughs> Just leave the dog. Leave the dog, Tim. But uh, no, it was, uh, it was all good. But then, you know what? You never know. Life changes. That's so, right. Uh, I, I thought... You know, we both did a good job of adapting last year with the special assignment, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last um, from there on. But, um, hey, let's talk about, you know, we, we kind of talked about those as being some challenges, but what were some of the other challenges that you would highlight um, for 2021? Well, I think the YouTube algorithm is kind of a mystery out there. So, And so for our viewers... You know, it's trying to unlock the people that want to see our content. And how does YouTube promote our shows and so that people get a chance to see those? And so without us spending a ton of money to try to get it out in front of people, we're trying to unlock that algorithm so that we can get that done. So that's that's a that's a challenge. I think we're learning some things. I don't want to go into great detail on that, but uh, we did some tests, just some tests last week, and um, it looks pretty promising. So we're going to continue to go down that path. So you're going to see some changes to our channel, just as an FYI, and that's due to that algorithm that we're starting to see. Um, COVID in itself has been a challenge. C one niner kind of kicked us in the sack yeah. in twenty one. We thought uh, twenty twenty was, uh, and it will, I think twenty twenty was pretty Worse. bad because yeah. of the quarantine and and all the things with it. But twenty twenty one really wasn't much better, other than you could get out and about mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, but it still hampered a lot of our podcasting. And I think twenty twenty two is going to be probably a lot like twenty one, don't you think? I, I, if I had to predict, but uh, boy, I, I would have predicted. Two years ago, we'd be through this by now, but uh, who knows? But uh, yeah, I mean, I, if nothing else, we're I think we're as a society growing and adapting to this, and you know, there's always hope, I guess. Yep. Yeah. And what other challenges do we have? Well, I mean, f- for us, I mean, for me, and and I don't know about you, Tim, but it's always a challenge of getting fresh content and 
you know, what episodes and scheduling people and, and getting those. So, I mean, we want to produce the best product we can. We also really want to focus on agendas that we learn from and may be applicable to our properties and our lives. So, uh, you know, continuing trying to fill that basket full of agenda items is, is a constant challenge in 2021 wasn't any different, but I think we did a good job. I mean, we, we certainly had a lot more episodes out there, uh, almost quadrupled our episodes, uh, from 2020. So, um, that was a good thing, but it's always a challenge for, uh, for that fresh content. For sure. Yeah. But let's go into successes, right? Yeah. I mean, so since you brought those up, uh, do you want to talk about some of the statistics? Oh, uh, yeah, I can. Um, I'm going to have to flip the page here, here but from right a statistics here. standpoint, um, and, and we did this, I, rem I distinctly remember doing this. Last year about this so with, with 2020, but uh, some updates, we had about 4,600 views, total views of our episodes um, in 2021. So that that's pretty good. Um, almost 450 hours of viewership on the, the episodes that we have. And what's, what's encouraging about that is that's about almost a 40% increase wow. from the previous year. 40%. Yeah, I mean, if you could sit there on anything and say, you know, we improved forty percent in on this or that over year on year, I mean, that's that's pretty darn good. Yes, but, that's uh, awesome. Um, so that's awesome. The big number that always pops out is these impressions, right? How many times does two dumbass impression come up on people's computers or their small phones or whatever? We're up to uh, almost fifty-five thousand impressions. Wow. So that's hard to hard to fathom, but uh, we're there, and then. Um, our average viewership time on on each uh, episode is about a little bit over seven minutes. That's good. So all good numbers. Um, again, I think the big one there is I think we ended up with uh, 37 episodes for 2021 or thereabouts, give or take, uh, one or two. And if I remember back in 2020, I think we we're at 14, 15. Well, and so I want to one more thing. That's just YouTube data. Yeah. Right. So we actually have. Our podcast, our audio podcast data last year that we added to it, that's not in there, which is, I mean, so we're, we're really increasing. It's super good. Super good. I think good we're news. on a good trajectory. Yeah. You know, despite um, some of our challenges. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, it kind of, to me anyway, we, we, during our strategic meeting after this episode, we'll talk about 2022, what we want to do. But um, I, I think there's a lot of things that we can uh, build some leverage off of. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know if people realize the average podcast uh, only lasts about seven episodes and it kind of peters out. And we're at like, I think 60? 60, mid 60s. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, how about our wives? I mean, there's... Yeah, I mean, let's, so let's talk about some of the highlights, right? We talked about some of the challenges, and we threw some numbers out there. Um, but what were some of the successes um, of, of this year? Well, we had our dumbass wives who were starting to move from skeptical to supportive. we mean that in the nicest manner. <laughs> when we say literally dumbass wives. Uh, yeah, uh, not, uh, not yeah. figuratively, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, our wives are... Uh, are becoming more supportive there actually we've integrated them into our show to some degree and uh they do a great job and uh it's the episodes they did are some some big hitters for us some of our bigger viewership came off um uh canned venison and uh, homemade candles and fire starters i think so uh, yeah uh, interesting you know the other thing i'm excited about um from 2021 is the first time that we use someone else's podcast um, incorporated into ours and you know calling it a partnership and it was with Project Farm on rechargeable batteries and um, you, you can watch that episode here by just kind of clicking this card is what we're calling it um, right up here if you want to look at rechargeable batteries but super knowledgeable person certainly put in the time and effort and work into it and um, you know it was a blessing for him to let us springboard off that use that material and build off it and we learned a lot learned a ton and it was very applicable to us we both use rechargeable batteries um i, I was in the process of buying more 
Um, I know we're going to buy more in the future, so it's uh, it's going to be usable information. Yeah, it's a good episode. If you have not seen that, you should tune into that. Yeah, again, rechargeable batteries. Just push the button <laughs> right here, right? So, um, you know, we had sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about our sponsors. So we had. Uh, well, gosh, we had Nose Jammer, which that was one of our targets that we wanted to secure. Uh, been very supportive of us. We really believe in their product. Uh, I think that's the, I, we believed in their product way before they became a sponsor. And, uh, you know, I'm going to reference, if you go back to our episode, you know, Stinky Hutting. So here's our card. Hit right? the card, right? Right. Uh, stinky Hutting. Uh, we were featuring Nose Jammer pretty prominently in that episode. So, again, I'd encourage you to look at that. So, Nose Jammer, who else? Um, we have um, IMH, Iowa Missouri Hybrids um, with Aaron. And, um, again, that was a great uh, three-part. It was a two-part for sure, maybe three-part on food, food plotting. But he became a sponsor of us, so... Make sure you give uh, Aaron a shout out. And then uh, there's downtown Main Street, Clarksville, Iowa with uh, Pete and Shorties. Pete and Shorties. Uh, Mike and Amy Kramer. So give them a shout out on um, on Facebook or, or uh, any other multimedia. But For sure, the coldest beer in town. <laughs> For sure. It really is a good <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like Pete and Shorties, but I'm a little biased. But uh, anyway, you know, we're blessed to, to have those sponsorship again. If we reflect back a year ago, we said we wanted to get into sponsorship, and here we set with three, and you know who knows what 2022 will uh, provide. But it's it's been a blessing. It's sure. been a blessing. Awesome. So Tim, if I had to put you on a spot for, you know, if you had to pick three three videos or three episodes, what uh, what what would be your number one, or which would be one of your three? Well, going back to that 2020 2020. Uh, that Stinky Honey was a great show. But going into 2021, I would have to probably pick CWD. We've spent so much time on CWD this year in our episodes. And we even did it in 20. I think it's just very important for us all to be aware of. So I'd pick CWD. Yeah, great topic, great sources. Um, and again, very applicable to our properties, right? We're right on the edge. edge. I think everybody's right on the edge, but we're more on the publicized edge but uh how about yourself yeah for me um i i kind of mentioned it already but certainly one of the top three would be with uh aaron palm with uh imh who's also one of our sponsors but uh man that guy can talk about food plots and plants and uh, this that and the other and it, I, he just never loses my attention he's so knowledgeable and uh certainly one of my top three Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was super interesting. Like I said, we could talk with Aaron practically all day, right? I mean, you got to keep him really scripted. Otherwise, I mean, it'll be an all day thing. Yeah. And again, you know, click the card here because um, the, those are a great couple episodes of um, Aaron on, on food plots because we were, I think we were able to keep him fairly focused on. Uh, on a topic or two there and uh man there was just a breath of knowledge yeah what else for you uh, prairie dogs so you know joel and i went out prairie dog hunting uh we did an episode on prairie dogs and uh probably the bit besides it was a lot of fun my wife's cousin one of his friends and us two went up there middle of uh, north dakota bismarck area yeah and I think the biggest thing, the challenge of hunting and then trying to film that and make it um, so that the viewer can appreciate everything that you're going through, that was very challenging, but I learned a lot. So, Yeah, we took a swing at it, and it uh, turned out better than I thought it was, uh, honestly. But, um, I mean, it's just so, there's a lot of challenges, right? Yeah. Little things like it was so bright that you couldn't even see in the viewfinder. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> you didn't know what you're filming, right? And and the distances were shooting, and you know, uh, I, I would like to take another swing at that again. I think um, we'll get that opportunity. Fun. I hope so. I hope so. How, what's your uh, what's your next? One? And again, um, I think we kind of touched on this one, but uh, again, card right here: rechargeable batteries um, with Project Farm. Again. 
I was in the market for buying batteries. I had spent a lot of money on rechargeable batteries. I learned a ton going through that with, with him. And, um, you know, I think I made a good purchase. But more than that, I really appreciated the way he approached the testing. Very and made it, Yeah, made it so easy to understand and uh, not overwhelming for me. Yeah. So rechargeable batteries was is in my top three. My, uh, probably my third one, Jake, was the Kubota. So part of my, part of my assignment, I needed to upgrade my tractor. Uh, I had an old 1970-ish uh, international harvester and it was dangerous. So we did a product review. I ended up getting a Kubota uh, 6000 MX or an MX 6000, I think is what it is. And uh, super happy with it. So we did, you talked me into doing a product review on it or an unboxing. And uh, I think it turned out great. It's a nice tractor. <laughs> it's a nice tractor. Um, I think, I suspect that uh, our audience will be seeing more video containing uh, yeah. the tractor in use this, uh, this year. I've got a name for it, but I'm not ready to uh, <laughs> divulge that at this juncture. I'll explain that later. If you got any ideas, put them in comments. It's not too late, right? That's funny. That's funny. You know, bring it home. Um, we did this one earlier in the year, but uh, the trail camera series of episodes that we did, you know, we tried to um, format it around the Super Bowl, like brackets, you know, winner would stay in, loser would be out. And I really like that, but... Man, did I learn a lot about the trail cameras that you and I have and uh, walked away with a better appreciation of what to look for in trail cameras. And then I guess the biggest thing I learned there was you really don't know, really, you really don't know how good a trail camera you got unless you've got two trail cameras setting up side by side and you're comparing the two. We learned a lot. A lot. So, I, th I mean, again, there's an episode out there on that. But, I mean, we learned a lot about battery usage. We learned about proximity. There's so many features that they sell us to on these cameras. I'm not trying to summarize that. But we learned which ones really matter. Yeah. Yeah, and which ones don't. Because it's, there's a lot of marketing involved. But, uh, yeah, take, again, take a look at these cards that I'm pointing at up here on uh, the, the camera episodes. Because um, I know... If, if you're an outdoors person, if you have trail cameras, you'll learn something from these um, from these episodes for sure. Yeah. And uh, so that moves us to 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you any predictions for uh, the upcoming year? Gosh, I think we're going to do more series, uh, more like trying to bundle a series of episodes together. I think that's very helpful for our listeners, and it's basically how things happen as we plan for the next year. So pre-emergence to fertilizers to herbicide, herbicide excuse me, and uh, those types of things. I, I would expect we'll do some more series type stuff. I like that. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I think the other thing that we did a little more of um, this year that uh, we'll see more in 2022 is calling them product reviews. Um, I know we focused on the Kubota, but it could be crossbows. It could be trail cameras. It could be cellular trail cameras. Um, it can, you know, but products that we are either purchasing or contemplating purchasing or, or have purchased, but, um, you know, really testing it and, and putting it through its ringers to uh, share those results. Yeah, I would expect uh, we did the Super Bowl last year for the Super Bowl challenge for our cameras. I would expect we'll do something very similar to that this year, too. Uh, let's see what else. Um, resource partnering. We do. We partnered a lot with the DNR last year. Uh, Project Farm, like you just mentioned. Yeah. I would expect us to continue to do more partnering. I think that's of interest to our viewers as well as these guys these folks are really subject matter experts and it's to your benefit to bring them on yeah yeah those episodes turned out so well and uh i agree i agree i think you i think you nailed it i think you nailed it buddy um i guess 
you know, before we close out and put closure to this episode in this year, before we go into season three, right? Season three. Season three of Midwest Hunting by Two Dumbasses. Dumbasses. Season three. But before we do that, again, I just want to reach out to our sponsors and tell uh, those, those sponsors, thank you so much for what you've done with us. Folks, hit them up. Um, you know, hit them up. Tell them the two dumbasses sent you. And uh, that means a lot to us from them to be able to sponsor us. But uh, they need to hear back from our audience that, uh, you know, they, that you guys appreciate them also. Then the last thing is, you know, hit the subscribe button. Um, that subscribe, the subscribe button really helps. If anytime we get new episodes pushed out to you, automatically get a highlight on it and um, really provides us with good analytics and, and a little more leverage to get more and better sponsorship moving forward. Yeah, it's a little mouse over button on this, on this side, on the right-hand side of your screen. So it'll be right over here. You mouse over that, click subscribe, costs you nothing, and uh, really helps us to upgrade our technology and and keep bringing these shows to you. But, uh, and then last thank you I've got is just for our audience and our watchers out there. Again, this wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be anything without you watching and your feedback and your comments. And uh, we have fun doing it, Tim. But, uh, you know, the feedback and, and the comments that we get from our viewership is is uh, certainly uh, appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah. So until then. But until then, you know. Be, be safe, safe. Have, have fun. fun and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Don't be afraid of using the uh, screwdriver or some sort of a prick of a pick to pull that out. Uh, I'm gonna scratch that. We so can, can we can edit the prick part. Lay down. Come here. Come on, tree. Sit. Sit. Stay. Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. There he is, right there, you see him? Right on the outside of that hill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, morning, Joel. Morning. Gosh. Rough. We're out here in beautiful North Dakota, and, uh, we're gonna go prairie dog hunting today, aren't we? We are. It's uh, first day after a 10 or 12 hour drive yesterday out here. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully you can hear those prairie dogs in the background here. So uh, I think the weather's gonna be good and uh, hopefully the wind light and uh, the shoot straight. Yeah, well, you know, that craft beer we had last night sure doesn't help us uh, shoot straight, does it? It does not. It's kind of a rough morning. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a rough morning. How do you want to start this? Yeah, I don't know. Tim, how are you? Where are we at? Kind of deal? Alright. Tim, here we are. It's not Iowa. No, we're in the middle of South Dakota. Or no, North, North Dakota. Dakota. Mountain time to be specific. Hey, don't tell Tim. I'm sneaking another little bit of his uh, expensive uh, bourbon. You caught me. You caught me. <laughs> well, this concludes the base assembly that we've done here for the Mac Daddy. I'll do another video on install, putting it up into the tree. It's getting a little dark for tonight, so it's, it's, I think it's a good time to uh, quit and scratch all of that, Joel. Ready? 
action. Nope. Hi, welcome YouTube viewers and podcasters everywhere. I am Samantha, wife of a dumbass. This is my friend Ruthie, another wife of a dumbass. <laughs> Tim, welcome to Midwest Hunting Outdoors Tips and Tricks. We've got, uh, we're really doing a product review today. Tell me about what we're going to do. Well, I tell you what, you know, Joel, I had a, uh, you know what, let's do that. Does that work? Yep. Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Welcome guys to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors. I cannot do this, Joel. <laughs> Iowa-Missouri Hybrids has been a family-owned business since the 1930s. Located in historic Kiyosakwa, Iowa, Aaron and his team are a one-stop shop for farmers, hunters, and landowners. For your conservation program, CRP, food plots, and all planting needs, Give Aaron at IMH a call and tell him the two dumbasses sent you. Nose Jammer contains vanillin and other natural aromatic compounds that have the ability to effectively jam an animal's sense of smell. Just like an overly bright light can wash out a photographic image, Nose Jammer overwhelms the olfactory system and overpowers an animal's ability to detect and track human scent. Hunting in the wrong wind? Jam them with Nose Jammer. Established in 1934, Pete and Shorty's is located on Main Street, Clarksville, Iowa. Pete and Shorty's is famous for their half-pound burgers, hand-breaded tenderloins, and homemade pizza. The beer is always cold, and the Bloody Marys are the best in town. Stop in and tell Mike and Amy that the two dumbasses sent you. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumb Asses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.